How's everybody doing? Doing good? 1130 crowd? Come on. So I'm talking about we had a great service at 9, 945. Like I said, we got um, just a family of three um, baptized this morning. And, um, you know, when I say, um, I say it a lot because I believe it, um, that we get to be a part of what God is doing. We get to be a part of what God is doing. God has a great plan for this area, for this city, for this church. He has an amazing plan in place. And at the end of our lives, we get to stand before Jesus and know that we did our part. Our mission here at Elevate is to reach thousands for Jesus. And someday we will stand before him and, and know that we did our part. And it is an honor, it is a privilege to be a part of what God is doing on the earth. It's not just for the staff, right? It's not just for the leaders. It's for everybody. From the people that hold babies on Sunday morning, all the way to the worship team, to the greeters, tech people. We all get to do our part. And I'm just so reminded when we baptize people that it is such an honor to be a part of what God wants to do here. Amen. Let that never be something that we just pass over. Let it be something so real in our lives. Let's pray this morning. Jesus, we thank you so much, Father God, for what you want to do in this service, Lord Jesus. Whatever your plans are, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you just have your way in our hearts, that you give us a fresh word, something, Lord Jesus, that will encourage our hearts, strengthen our minds. We just fix our eyes on you, Jesus. I ask that you speak through me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give it up for the worship team, everybody. Come on. Let's give it up for Joe Hess in the back, filling in for drums. Killing it. We appreciate him. Man, we appreciate him. Thank you, Lord. It's my first time uh, last week ever baptizing somebody. Um, and... Today was my first time ever taking up communion, you know? So, hey, it's, it's the weeks of firsts, everybody. <laughs> Praise God. I'm always reminded, I told, I told everybody this first service, but I'm always reminded of, uh, I, had a, I had a friend in middle school uh, named Charlie Colucci. He was very much Italian and um, a hilarious guy. And um, I went to church with him um, once and... Uh, they took up communion every single Sunday, and it was a Presbyterian church, and uh, we took communion, and uh, I did not know, but it was real wine, and uh, I felt it all the way down my throat, and, uh, you know, all I had to say was, uh, excellent year, so, um, you know, it was amazing, you know, so I'm always reminded every single time I take, I take up communion, um, needless to say, I went back to his church, um, just kidding. It was in middle school. Um, praise God. I want to talk today about don't limit the Lord. Don't limit the Lord. First question I want to ask all of us is just to lay the foundation here is can we limit God? Can we limit God? The answer is yes, we can. Mark chapter 6 Four through five, it says this, Jesus said to them, a prophet is treated with honor everywhere except in his own hometown, among his relatives and in his own house. He was unable to do any miracle in Nazareth except to heal a few sick people by laying his hands upon them. This verse is talking about how Jesus was unable to do miracles. 
It didn't say that he was unwilling. It didn't say he was un, uh, that he didn't want to, that he just wanted to pass these sick people by, but that he was unable to do miracles. What tells me is that we can limit what God wants to do in our lives. We can limit what God wants to do in our lives. And so what is limiting? And I love this uh, definition. It says, a restriction on the size or amount of something permissible or possible. So in our lives, we have to realize this, okay? Is that we can put restrictions on what God wants to do in our lives. We can put restrictions on what God wants to do in our lives. God has this amazing, amazing plan for us, not only to work in us, but to work through us. God not only wants to reveal himself to us, but he also wants to work through us. Amen? As we know Jesus, as he reveals himself to us, God wants to use now that to reach other people for his glory, for his name, to reach him for himself. And we can put restrictions on that. I wanna illustrate it this way. Um, it's a story and, and just an analogy that I heard one time. It says that three kids walk into a candy store. And this is not like a stand-up joke or anything like that, okay? Three kids walk into a candy store, all right? Three kids walk into a candy store and there's a special deal going on. There's a, there's a jar of candy and each kid can stick their hand in the jar and however many pieces of candy they grab, that's how many they can have, all right? The first kid is like, well, I'm gonna reach in the jar and you know, he got it and got a good handful, right? And super impressed, got a couple fun size Snickers, everything like that. You know, but he reaches in there, he got a good handful. The second kid got a little smarter. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna reach both of my hands in there and I'm gonna grab an even bigger handful. And the third kid just stared at the owner and the owner finally reached his hand in there and gave some to the third kid. And after a while, the owner came up to the kid and said, why didn't you grab the candy out of the jar? And the kid re replied, because I knew your hands were bigger than mine and you could have grabbed more candy. And I think that this is a story that perfectly illustrates how we can live our lives sometimes, is that we can be like the first and second kid that is saying, you know what, I'm gonna grab what I think I can grab out of the candy jar. But God is saying, look, if you choose not to limit me, I can grab more than you can. My hand is bigger than yours. God wants to fulfill this plan in your life that he has for you. Like I said, God wants to use you. God wants to work through you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your home. God wants to prune you. God wants to lead you down the right path. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says this, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo all of them for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. How about you, but when I read this verse, okay, when I read this verse, I get excited about what God wants to do inside of my life, amen? God wants to do something amazing that, that exceeds our greatest request. When we think about our lives, when we think about what our lives could be, imagine this, that God sees it as something greater. God sees your life as something greater. When you ask him for a request, when you pray, God wants to exceed that request. God wants to give you more. 
in your wildest imagination. This is what God wants for your life, but so many of us can act like the first and second kid that wants to put limitations on how much God wants to give you in your life. And so the question this morning is, is how do we limit God in our lives? How do we limit God in our lives? Psalms 78, 41 through 43 says this, again and again, they limited God, I'm talking about Israel here, again and again, they limited God, preventing him from blessing them. Continually, they turned back from him and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They forgot his great love, how he took them by his, by his hand, and with redemption's kiss, he delivered them from their enemies. They disregarded all the epic signs and marvels they saw when they escaped from Egypt's bondage. They forgot the judgment of the plagues that set them free. In this verse, the Israelites limited God because they forgot about what God had done in their life. They had forgotten about what God had done in their life. And when we forget things, when we forget what God has done in our lives, how he's taken us so far, like this is the, this is the reason why Psalms 103 says, do not forget his benefits that heals your body. This is why we take communion to not forget what Jesus has done, the fact that he spilt his blood for us. Like if that's the only testimony you have, that is enough. But we often just so forget what God has done. We forget what he has done in our lives. And when we forget, we start to lose faith. When we forget, our belief starts to waver. We start to lose excitement. We start to lose anticipation in our life. I was on uh, Instagram the other day and I came across this page that was just absolutely like 90s nostalgic things. Anybody grew up, anybody grew up in the 90s? Anybody? Yeah, come on. Anybody have kids in the 90s? Yeah. I was on this page and I just kept on seeing all these things and I'm like, I did that. I did that. I drank that, you know? Come on, let's put up a couple pictures real quick. Who remembers this, everybody? Anybody have one of these? Yep. It's called the Ankle Buster for sure, all right? Still not the same. There goes college soccer, all right? How about this one? Yep. Those were used as weapons for sure in the old classroom. Uh, bop it, everybody. Come on. Oh, hold on. Before we move on, who's, who's, who would claim that you're a master at bop it? Yeah, okay. All right. Couple people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Then they just came out with the bop it extreme. Let's say that's just, that's just too much. Still have it? You have both? That's unbelievable. Man, I'm telling you, eBay. What's next? Beanie Babies. Come on. Admit it. Who collected them? Again, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of my, uh, one of my sisters uh, collected Beanie Babies. I'm, actually, I'm pretty sure they all did. Um, but one of my sisters uh, one time left a gorilla Beanie Baby on, um, on a lamp for some reason, and it completely just burned underneath it. And we, I, my mom told me after first service that she still has it until this day. And I'm like, get rid of it. Um, and uh, so, anyway, Beanie Babies, what else we got? Anybody remember Fresca? I, I'm going to be honest. I swear, my parents were obsessed with Fresca. Like, I, I just, you know, I didn't understand uh, what was the big deal, you know? But uh, what else we got? Yeah, anybody remember these? <sighs> Man, hot summer day, come on in. Grab you a drink, you know? You, do, you were doing well in the 90s if you got one of these in your fridge. I'll tell you that much, all right? I don't care how the economy was. If you got that in your fridge, you're doing well, all right? But I think all of us would agree, right, 
Seeing these things, remembering the 90s, not just the 90s, but remembering the things that we experienced in our life, I'd all say that we all got a little bit excited, right? We all got a little bit like, woo, energized. That's what Ephesians 3.20 is talking about, is that the plans of God will constantly energize you. The plans of God will, will constantly give you some energy. And so when we live our lives remembering what God has done, it builds our faith, amen? When we remember what God has done in our lives, that he took us from darkness to light, that he set us free, it builds our faith. And now God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly because we remember what he's done because we're not putting restrictions on what he's done. We're not forgetting just like the Israelites did. We're remembering and remembering what he has done. But I wanna go through a couple of these situations real quick and scenarios of why do we forget? What causes us to forget? What causes us to, to put restrictions and limitations on God? And the first one is this, we become too familiar with God. We become too familiar with God. And what I mean by that is, is that we can become so familiar with God that he becomes common in our lives. He becomes something that someone that we talk to one day and we just forget the next. Like I shared at the beginning, Mark 6, four through five, Jesus said to them, a prophet is treated with honor everywhere except for in his own hometown. The reason why Jesus was not able to do miracles is because they treated Jesus as common instead of entreating him with absolute honor. With absolute honor. Look, there's a, there's a book by John Bevere called Honor's Reward. If you wanna read a book that will absolutely kick your butt, read it, all right? I read it at, when I uh, graduated high school and it's absolutely changed my mind, my mind, my heart, everything like that. But he talks about what honor means. And honor is something that is weighty. Honor is something that is like treated like gold. Honor is something that is not common. Honor is something that is just this, this has this weight to it. And I think in our lives, we're all guilty of this, that we can treat God as common. There is this country song that is just honestly the dumbest thing ever, you know? And, and it's, it's, it goes like, I only talk to God when I need a favor. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, anytime it comes on the radio, Elena and I are either turning it off or we're swerving off the road. But in one way, we're not gonna hear it, all right? Because A, it gets into your head. Um, and, and B, it's just this ridiculous thought that I'm only going to talk to God when I need a favor. And that's not honor. I only talk to God when I need him. And believe me, I am guilty of this that when I need him in my life, I'm in my prayer closet every single day. But when things are going good, it becomes common. I mean, I think about the people um, on, on Palm Sunday when, when Jesus came into Jerusalem and they were praising his name and they were laying down palms and they were laying down their cloaks and, and he was riding in on a donkey and, and they were treating him as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They were treating him with such honor. And then a week later, they're saying, crucify him. Like, I gotta believe that in their hearts, it just became like a, oh, you're just somebody else. You're not really the king of kings. You're just, you're just somebody that just rode in on a donkey. 
I gotta believe that by the end of the week, Jesus became common in their lives. And so when it becomes common in our lives, we put restrictions on him. When he becomes just like this thing that we can put over here, and then when we need him, we come back to him. We put restrictions on our lives. But can I just remind you that God has a plan for every single day? Like God has a plan for today. Like you're going to church, you're worshiping the Lord, hearing this message, but then God has a plan for afterwards. God wants to do something in your life afterwards. God wants to do something in your life tomorrow morning. But when we treat God as just this thing that we put on the shelf, we restrict him instead of living with this honor that says, Lord, you have done so much in my life. You are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. I'm gonna treat you with honor today because I don't wanna just become familiar with you and I don't wanna just, just walk with you. And, 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 and it's, like, <clears throat> it's like this, that I, I think for the married couples, we can testify for this, but Elena, at the beginning of the week, she flew down to Florida just to have a little vacation with our family. And, and um, you know, I had to work, so I met her on, uh, on Wednesday night and she picked me up. And, and people asked me, what did I do for like those three days? I was miserable, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I was just working on the house, just doing random projects and, uh, and cleaning and everything like that. And it's, it, it's like this in marriage that, that we can live with our spouse every single day. But the moment that they're gone, it's just like, I've just treated you like you're just common. I've just treated you like, like you're just here, we're just existing, we're just living together. And the moment that she's gone, I'm like, I freaking miss you, you know? Like, come back. But we can just live our lives and our relationship like this with the Lord. But we restrict God when, we, when, he, when he is not weighty to us, when he's not honored in our lives. Amen? Number two is this, we forget when we allow life to determine what the answer is. Peter, denying Jesus, Mark chapter 14, verse 31, says this, but Peter was insistent and replied empathetically, I will absolutely not, under no circumstances, will I deny you. Even if I have to die with you, and all the others repeated the same. But later on in Matthew chapter 26, 6, 69 through 74, it says this, meanwhile, Peter was still sitting outside in the courtyard with a young girl, uh, came up to him and said, I recognize you. You were with Jesus, the Galilean. In front of everyone, Peter denied it and said, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Later, he stood near the gateway of the courtyard. Another servant girl noticed him and said, I know this man is a follower of Jesus the Nazarene. Once again, Peter denied it. And with an oath, he said, I tell you, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing nearby approached Peter and said, we know you're one of his disciples. We can tell by your speech, your Galilean accent gives you away. Peter denied it and using profanity, he said, I don't know the man. At that very moment, the sound of the crowing rooster pierced the night. Peter was faced in this moment with pressure. And I think we all have felt pressure in life and fear in life. And the problem is, is that when we allow these circumstances in life to be the answer, a place that we just live in and we just hide in and we just find comfort in, that type of stuff will so easily allow us to forget what God has spoken to us. We live in pressure and then we feel that God hasn't made a way. We live in stress and we think that God's grace isn't enough anymore. We live in hurt and we say God's not working anymore. We live in fear 
and we think that God has left us. My old pastor used to say that, that God's not your problem, but he is your answer. God's not your problem, but he is your answer. And when we allow the pressure of the world, when we allow fear, when we allow hurt, when we allow all of these things to be what we run to instead of Jesus, we will forget what he's spoken to us. The last thing is this, time. Time will get you to forget I think about the disciples. And when Jesus had died, this is somebody that they loved, that they followed for three years. And all of a sudden, he's gone. But how many times did he say, that the Son of Man must suffer, but on the third day he will rise again. And it only took them three days to forget what Jesus had told them. And time can cause you to forget what God has spoken. Because we live our lives and we think that the promise of God has faded because we're still waiting on something. We're still waiting on an answer. We're still waiting on God to show up. We're still waiting on things that God has spoken of our lives. Time will make you forget who you are in Christ. Time will make you see yourself differently. Time will make you forget your dreams. I know for me that there has been dreams in my life that because of time, I have forgotten about. And now the Lord's trying to say, stop limiting me by where you're at right now. Stop putting restrictions on me because you're still waiting. My word has not changed. Like, I think that somebody needs to hear that this morning, that my word has not changed. What I spoke over you, the dreams that I placed in your heart has not changed. No matter how much time has passed, I'm still working in your life. I'm still here with you. You've forgotten words that have been spoken over you. You've forgotten that God is with you. Maybe you know somebody, or maybe this is you, but you're still waiting on that healing that you need. God's promise to heal your life is still strong today. Do not forget, do not forget, do not forget. The moment that we forget, is the moment that we allow our faith to waver. Maybe you've been praying and praying and praying for your kid or somebody you know to find Jesus. God's promise is still true this morning. God's promise is still true. And you may be waiting, you may be in a waiting spot right now, but let me remind you of this. He's never changed. He's still for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? He's still with you. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary of of doing good. For in due season we will reap a harvest. Don't let time Dictate the promise of God for your life. If God spoke it over you, he will bring it to pass. 
Amen. Why don't you stand up this morning? I want to pray over you. And then we're just going to, we're going to sing a new song this morning. But it just goes right along with what we were talking about. About how God's, God's never going to let you down. That his promise still stands. That time may have passed. You may have been hit by the world. God may have become familiar in your life. But God's promise is still yes and amen this morning. Amen. God's promise is still yes and amen. And the word amen means so be it. So let's raise up our hand right now all across this room. Let's just remember what Jesus said. Remember what he did on the cross. Remember what he spoke over your life. Let's just take a few minutes and let's just, let's just say thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for what you spoke over my life. Thank you, Jesus, for the plans of God that you spoke over me and that they will come to pass in Jesus' name. Father, we choose not to forget. Jesus, we choose not to forget. We believe that your promises, Lord Jesus, still stand, Father God. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you are still working in our lives. We believe, Lord Jesus, that your word is active, alive, living, Lord Jesus. And we hold on to that promise, Lord Jesus. We hold on to that dream that you spoke over us, Father. Lord, we just remember, we love you, Jesus. We honor you in this room, Father God. Lord, that you would not become common. You would not become, Lord, something that we can just forget about, Father God. But we choose to get off of our restrictions, Lord Jesus. We choose to lift the lid off of our lives, Father God, and let you work in our lives, Lord Jesus, to build up our faith, Father God, to believe for greater things, infinitely more, greater things, Lord Jesus, greater things, Father God, because of your promise, greater things, Lord Jesus, because you're still working. Come on, church, let's just worship this morning.